right, so in this podcast, what we're going to concentrate on are different features that we could see on the sun's surface or in its atmosphere. All right, so first question that uh, we should have here is, first off, what does the sun look like? And that's a complicated question, really, because it depends on what part of the sun you're going to look at. So first off, let's take a look at the photosphere. Again, photosphere is the layer of the sun that actually... Uh, produces the, or gives off the light that we see. So here is a real-time image of the sun. All right. And as you can see, there's not a ton of detail. Big, bright ball. Now, a couple things I will draw your attention to. Again, we talked about granulation uh, last time. And if uh, depending on the detail of this video, you can see that there are off-colored uh, spots in here. All right, the white and the, the uh, uh, brighter yellows. Okay, so those, that's the granulation that you can see. But I will draw your attention to these spots. That's the first thing we're going to look at. All right, these dark regions on the sun's uh, photosphere are called sunspots. All right, and uh, we'll look at those features. Here's one way over here. Now, if we take a look at another part of the sun, say if we look at the sun in ultraviolet light. Okay, now this is part of the light that our, our, our spectrum that our eye cannot see. But we can have certain detectors attached to a telescope that allow us to see this light. All right, so here is the sun in ultraviolet. Now, ultraviolet, uh, we actually cannot see that again. So these colors are false images. Uh, but what we can draw from it is that there are spots that are really bright in ultraviolet, which means it's really intense. And then the dark regions are places where it's not so bright. But uh, right, so, And then we can also start to see that there are these weird things shooting off. Uh, of the sun. And then last but not least, let's take a look at uh, the sun, but let's block the sun's surface and only look at the outer layers of its atmosphere, the corona. This is the actual sun uh, right here, the, the size of it, but we're blocking out that part of it, all right, and we're looking at the very dim corona. Again, this is kind of like uh, what we'd see if it was a total solar eclipse, but uh, we can see that there are these really bright spikes coming out way, way far away from the actual surface of the sun. And you can even see the stars, but that's not uh, really the point here. The idea is that if we look at different parts of the sun, we see different features. So what we want to look at in this is what features can we see where, and what does that tell us about the sun? All right, so let's take a look at the sunspots first. Now, this is a more active view where there are a lot more sunspots than there are currently on the sun. <clears throat> but a sunspot, are those really dark regions on the surface of the sun. Now, they are dark relative to the rest of the sun, but they're still really bright, actually. All right. If you were to somehow pull one of these sunspots off the sun's uh, photosphere and put it next to the full moon, it would actually outshine the brightness of the full moon. But relative to the disk of the sun, it is very dim. That's why it's darker. All right. And the reason um, for that is it's actually cool. All right. But it is relatively cool, but again, cool is relative. All right, The sun's surface is uh, thousands of degrees Celsius, about 5,000 degrees Kelvin, excuse me. And so this is still maybe three, 4,000 degrees. All right. But the reason why they're uh, cooler and darker is because of the sun's magnetic field is actually exiting or entering the surface here, All right, which actually causes the, the uh, the, the gases in uh, those magnetic fields to be cooler. Now, <clears throat> I say magnetic fields because unlike the Earth, all right, which has one North Pole and one South Pole that comes out of the North uh, Geographic Pole and descends into the uh, South Geographic Pole, all right, the Sun actually has many North Poles and many South Poles. All right, and that means you have a bunch of different magnetic fields exiting and entering the Sun. All right. Now, these uh, sunspots, if you were to watch them over the course of time, like Galileo did, you would see that these move across the sun's surface and uh, actually prove that the sun is rotating. And if we watch, so let's take a closer look at sunspots. Now, sunspots are the relatively cool areas of the sun. Take a look at a couple things about the sunspots. They're not all just uh, uh, individual spots. Usually they can form in groups or they can be individual. Also, they do not uh, always 
mean that they are one color. Usually there is a darker central part called the umbra, just like Earth's shadow, and the lighter part called the penumbra, uh, which is the outer part, not quite as cool. Again, you've got magnetic fields going in or out of these areas, which uh, magnetically bind the, uh, the atoms and cool them down. But if we take a look at these regions on the sun's surface that are relatively cool, and you would think there would not be a lot of energy coming out of these. But if we look at different parts of the atmosphere above or uh, these sunspots, you can see that in ultraviolet light at 1.5 million degrees high up in the corona, it's actually very active there. Um, if we look at another wavelength, all right, ultraviolet light at 60,000 degrees, again, those places uh, you have the sunspots are very active regions. And again, the x-rays, upwards of 2 million degrees, all right, the sunspots are indicators of where the sun is most active. Uh, a couple things also, sunspots themselves do not affect the Earth, but they do indicate areas of high solar activity. And that solar activity can actually affect the weather in space. Now, it's not quite like the same thing here on Earth um, with the high pressures, low pressure systems, things, but we do have solar weather. And when the weather gets bad, you can have solar storms, which can affect us. And we'll study that a little bit later. So that's one reason why it's really important to actually study the sun. Now, if we want to talk about solar storms, and we know that we can use the number of sunspots to say predict uh, the solar activity. Well, good question to ask, does the sun always have the same number of sunspots? Now, here's 1996, and you can see for the most part, again, uh, sunspots in this kind of light, which show up as very bright regions. And there's really not a lot on here. So it's very low activity. And in 1997, you can see here's a sunspot right here, sunspot right here, down here, all right, maybe one or two up here, 1998. All right, increasing in activity, 1999, becoming very active. All right, lots of sunspots, which means there'd be lots of solar storms, uh, lots of uh, bad space weather, if you would. 2000, again, more and more activity. So what we want to see here is that the number of sunspots changes throughout the course of time. And one thing that you're going to study in the next lab with the sunspot activity is, is there a pattern? Is there a degree of predictability on how the sun's activity changes? All right, that's what you're going to do in the sunspot lab. Anyways, let's move on. All right, a couple of the different properties that we want to talk about and features that we see. Flares, prominences, uh, and something called CMEs. So first off, flares. Flares are these big explosions, basically, off the surface of the sun. Now, we talked about how uh, the sunspots are places where the magnetic field comes out or goes in. Well, let's take a look at some of these videos. All right, so we want to take a look at this sunspot here, and you can kind of see little loops and things. Those are actually the magnetic field lines of the, of the sun's magnetic poles coming in and out. And since um, the gas of the, uh, the sun is charged as it comes out, all right, it actually follows along these magnetic field lines. And every once in a while you see these little pops. Well, think of these as a spring. As the uh, spring gets twisted and coiled and kinked, it's building up energy. Well, when that spring finally unkinks itself, it releases all of that energy. And any of the gas and dust that's inside that uh, that loop can get flung out. Now you can also have something known as a prominence. Now prominences are like a flare, but actually loop back in. All right, kind of like this over here. This is a really big prominence. Prominences uh, are arcs of gas in the chromosphere. So uh, again, the chromosphere are those uh, the layer of the atmosphere above the photosphere. <clears throat> and just for size, you can see this large loop here in comparison to the size of the Earth. All right, these things are very, very large. And the largest explosions, all right, when these flares uh, explode off, if they're really big, they're 
sometimes known as CMEs, coronal mass ejections, which means it's shooting out a lot of material. All right, so let's take a look at those. So this is looking at the outer layers of the corona, and you can see all this material flying off the sun all right, at different times. Boom, boom, all right. These are coronal mass ejections. And just look at the amount of material coming off of these. And every once in a while, the screen goes a little staticky looking. That's when uh, the charged particles coming out of the sun actually hit the camera. All right. <clears throat> but these are the, the coronal mass ejections, these huge explosions coming off of the sun. Here's another uh, set of CMEs, and you can see it a little bit more zoomed out. You can see that all that material just continually flying off of the sun. All right. This is known as a solar wind, and these large explosions all right, kind of add to that wind. Right, and then you want to watch down here. There's a planet, but there's also something cool coming in here. There you go. Is a comet or or something uh, going towards the sun? <clears throat> All right, but what happens when uh, a large CME, if it's pointed in the right direction, and it's pointed towards Earth, all that material all right, can actually have a big effect on us here on Earth, uh, since we are becoming heavily dependent on electronics, and uh, those electronics are dependent on satellites, which are up in space and affected by things that go on in space. All right. All that charged uh, material flying out of the sun, out of the sun at high speeds, can damage our electronics. They can overload our power lines. They can cause power outages, uh, damage satellites, and one nice little thing is they can increase the auroras, right, which is the last thing that we're going to talk about. Okay, so that a material flying out of the sun all the time is known as the solar wind. It's a bunch of charged particles, basically protons and electrons, because again, they the sun is made out of hydrogen, a plasma of hydrogen, and that means you have protons floating around in a soup of electrons. When the sun explodes, that stuff comes flying out. When that stuff, uh, that solar wind comes flying uh, towards us, luckily we have a magnetic field that diverts that, uh, those charged particles to the, either the northern pole or the southern pole. And when that stuff comes flying down the field lines, smacks into our atmosphere, it creates the northern lights, known as the aurora borealis, or if you're in the southern hemisphere and see those same things, all right, it's called the aurora australis. All right, so the material comes flying off the sun, gets diverted to the north pole or the south pole, and we get to see these beautiful lights. All right.